Spa Leaders Masterclass Series. I hope you and your businesses are thriving no matter where you may be in the world. My name is Sal Capizzi, former Spa Director of Nexus Club New York, current digital media specialist here at Spa Executive, and the host of the Spa Leaders Masterclass Series. Today, I am joined by Winnie Tang, Director of Business Development for GiveX, and Krista Fallis, also a former Spa Director and Director of Customer Success here at Book for Time. Winnie, Krista, thank you so much for being a part of the Spa Leaders Masterclass Series today. Great to be here, thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Today we're going to be discussing one of the biggest silent revenue generators out there in the spa and wellness industry, and that's gift cards. Gift cards allow your guests to give the gift of new business to your property. Now, whether that guest is giving that gift certificate for a birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, or any other holiday, that is guaranteed revenue for you and the chance to retain a new returning client after they ha have had an exceptional service at your property. Now, GiveX is a highly innovative tech company offering gift card and point of sale solutions to a multitude of industries across the hospitality, food and beverage, and retail sectors. Book for Time has had a long-standing partnership with GiveX that has helped our clients seamlessly integrate and process these gift card sales and redemption right in our software. Winnie, talk to me about GiveX and let our viewers in on some insight on the flagship solutions that you provide. Yes. Yeah, so. So back in 1999, um, we primarily focused on back-end transaction processing for gift and loyalty. Um, that's really re where we built our reputation. But however, uh, you'll see from our history and key milestones, our, our company is very driven by continual innovation, continual development. So over the past 22 years, um, we've evolved an entire suite of products. So one of them is our Uptix product. Um, that is stored value on an admissions ticket. So that allows you to go take the money um, that's loaded onto that admission and, and to redeem it at concessions. And so it's very popular for large stadium venues and so on. Um, you mentioned one was our point of sale system. So we, we built that back in 2011. Um, it is a cloud-based system and included within it, it, it's fully integrated with all of our products. So we, we can really provide a turnkey solution. So gift, loyalty, we have online ordering inventory. Um, two other products that are really part of our flagships, one of them is our online solution, our customer web suite. It's a mobile wallet, so to speak, where a user can go and they can log into and enroll on a loyalty program, place an online order, and then even redeem or purchase a gift card. And then we also even have a, a self-ordering kiosk. So it's great for contactless ordering. It can be freestanding, mounted on wallets. So GearX really aims we, to really be a one-stop shop. If you can see, we, we really want to um, provide one place or one fully integrated solution to help ease business efficiencies uh, for our clients. So, so yeah. And that you are certainly doing. And a lot of that technology that, you know, you have helped GiveX roll out throughout the years is helping, you know, businesses create an, an insane amount of revenue, not only with like, because as you had mentioned, it's, you know, full service from, you know, um, online, you know, purchasing, e-commerce, uh, point of sale, and, you know, customer experience and loyalty points um, through, you know, the industries that you serve. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah. Winnie, you've been in this industry a long time and you've seen a lot of trends come and go with gift cards and point of sale systems. What is one trend that has stood the test of time and one trend that you were happy to see get archived in the history books forever? Mm, wow. <laughs> yeah, that is, first of all, so that was an amazing question. Um, I really wanted to kind of prepare something that was, was, uh, was true. Uh, one thing definitely is that, you know, both of these items, gift card and point of sale, um, have become a staple um, that we need in our daily lives. So it's something that's not going away and these are very needed. Um, I would say, you know, it's from the gift card side, uh, it is really still a gifting tool. It's, it's um, people will be purchasing gift cards for others, uh, whether it's whatever occasion it is, um, and it's actually studies show it's the most requested gift across any business in any industry. 
so during the pandemic, for example, it was a great gift because you didn't need to go to a store to shop. You have to be in person. Just pick it up at a, at a grocery store or a, drug, a pharmacy, right? Um, you can mail it, email it. It was instant. And then the recipient could go online and redeem it and purchase it. So um, great expansion for that. So it's something that is going to be certainly here with us to stay. Uh, another trend is, you know, we kind of saw the evolution from paper certificates mm -hmm. to plastic once it started getting automated. And then now, as you know, in this era of, of digital, it's now becoming part of our mobile wallet. Yeah. So that is something now we're going to be starting to see is everything in a digital format. So clients really phasing out the plastic now and just delivering or offering a digital e-cert, if you will, for gifting. So that's something that's that's interesting um, for that. On the on the point of sales side, uh, you know, it's interesting as far as uh, I guess footprint, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The big bulky systems you used to see okay. that that take up big counters and floor space, right? We're you know that's we're, that's being phased out certainly. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as our point of sale, it's very sleek, very small footprint. Um, and so it's really giving more real estate to, you know, a lot of our, our clients that really want more space to be able to exhibit their own products or their services. So the other thing is, is data. The point of sale is really used not just for the operational, but it's capturing information that later on through reports can give insight for our customers and for our clients. So more and more before I used to see terms like profit wizard or uh, executive summaries from point of sales. Uh, now you can really get into analytics. So uh, with the give back system, if you have our gift, our loyalty and our point of sale, you can drill down to a customer behavior to what they purchased, what their habitual sort of um, habits are specifically, and then use that information to market to them. And so that tool, the, the, the point of sale is now becoming used as far, part of our overall sort of marketing um, and in business intelligence tool, basically. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And looking at those metrics, you know, just as a former spa director myself, as soon as you, you know, look at trends and metrics, much like you mentioned, you see, you know, what, what customers are gravitating, are gravitating towards and, you know, the trends and, you know, what you can, you know, make better, you know, if you ran, you know, an end of the year holiday, you know, promotion, mm -hmm. um, whatever exactly. that may have been. Um, if you wanted to, you know, build on top of that to generate even more revenue um, next year, next month, next week. Um, and and then you could see, you know, where areas of opportunity are, you know, maybe you launched or ran exactly. something um, within your own brand and it didn't yeah. hit or take off the way that, you know, was expected. Um, right. that, looking at metrics is an excellent, you know, way to build on those areas of opportunity for, you know, future events and promotions as well. So great to oh, hear. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, thanks. Winnie, ballpark, how much revenue in volume is processed by GiveX's gift card platform every year? Yes. So great question. Um, when I went to our CFO to try and get this figure, I was astounded <laughs> by it. Um, GiveX prox processes approximately $5 billion in oh gift card God. transactions value per year. Right. And so clearly that figure keeps going up and up and up. Um, and so it's pretty remarkable um, how much that that's done on our platform. $5 billion every year. That's not from the creation, uh, the start of GiveX. That is every year and continues year. to grow. That is incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, wow. it's pretty remarkable. <laughs> wow. And that's, you know, innovation and, and a product that, you know, GiveX's clients love and is loyal to. I mean, that speaks volumes for how much, you know, uh, GiveX is depended on within these, you know, multiple industries. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Krista, I got one for you. How much revenue would you say some clients or even some of your former colleagues of yours are processing annually just by offering gift cards alone? We see quite a range in that. Um, obviously, you know, we have uh, many clients all over the world. And so um, depending on the location of the spa, you know, it could be a resort spa versus an urban spa. Um, so, you know, if you had a good local clientele, you would probably be selling uh, quite a bit more gift certificates to those to those locals. Um, I would think more than people that are traveling to buy 
like gift cards as well. So we might see higher numbers in urban centers. Um, but we've seen some clients make, you know, upwards of $2 million in gift certificate sales um, in one year. Uh, that would be, you know, quite at the top end of it. But, um, you know, it would be it would be typical to see a client make over you know, $200,000 within a year. Um, and, you know, as a previous spa director, knowing and relying on that revenue for the following year, um, we had actually figured out a formula in how we could project how much money we were going to make the following year based off of some of that guaranteed revenue that we knew would be coming through from the gift cards. So always a great way to protect your business as well, because, um, you know, you have, you will have clients if you have all this, you know, money sitting in gift certificates that needs to be redeemed. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more mm -hmm. with everything that you just said. If you know that, you know, gift cards and that revenue waiting to be redeemed is out there, you know that there's going to be business and appointments on your books, you know, tomorrow and well into the future. I think I already know the answers to this next question I'm about to ask, but one of you may surprise me. Are there any months that gift, certi that gift certificate sales are typically higher? December. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. <laughs> um, I don't know, Winnie, if you want to jump in, I would say for, for spas uh, specifically, mm. December and February for Valentine's Day would be um, the biggest sellers. Okay, very yeah. interesting. Very interesting, the February Valentine's Day one, Krista. Winnie, any insight there from your end? Yeah, no, just like what Krista was saying, definitely number one is uh, top purchasing time uh, is Christmas. Uh, actually, Mother's Day and Father's Day, those are also some very popular occasions that we sort of, we do see transactions going up um, during those those holidays as well. Um, so I would say, yeah, those top four Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's, those, those popular occasions. Yeah, absolutely. That makes total sense. Um, random question. Um, what can both of you can, you know, feel free to jump in and answer this. How do you both feel? Because I know, Winnie, you deal with a certain suite of products and Krista, you're exceptionally well versed in, you know, our product. What do you both feel that general managers and spa directors can do to potentially increase gift card sales, whether that's, you know, in December or all year round? Sure. Oh, Krista, do you want to start or I can, I can kind of start with one. You can, yeah, go ahead and then I can um, add some spa. Related. Okay, great. You know, this is an interesting question. And, and so some of the, what we do at GiveX is we'll often um, have, have a lot of collaborative discussions with a lot of industry leaders. And one interesting tidbit, which you wouldn't think, or you wouldn't think it was that significant is actually the card design itself. Okay. Interestingly, the card design basically dictates your brand expression, right? So what you want to do is on that design, you want to create some sort of an emotional connection with the recipient. So something like you're appreciated, you are remembered. It, it removes that transactional feel. Yeah. And in fact, in the gifting of that recipient, it evokes that sort of that, that emotion that you're trying to, to create for that occasion. So um, it, in fact, it was an interesting study that, um, I think it was Victoria's Secrets did, I think, where they had this design of those angels, the Victoria uh, mm -hmm. uh, angels, and, and that picture, and the sales were very low. And so they did some studies, and they changed that angel, because I think boyfriends were buying it for their girlfriends, and the girlfriends were not pleased with, <laughs> with the design <laughs> of it, right? So then they changed the design to you know, happy anniversary, we, you, we, you know, you're remembered, you're cared for, I appreciate you. And those sales rocketed with that design alone. So it's pretty remarkable that it's a small, might not be, be paid attention to as much as it should, but that still impacts your bottom line sales. Absolutely. So, That's more of a, you know, buying um, with a psychology and a, an empathy factor kind of to it. I mean, if you're going to give, you know, a gift card of, you know, someone, you know, plastered on the gift card, which may to some be labeled as, you know, the perfect body or whatever, right. that may be, yeah. you know, it, that may be intimidating. And, you know, some, some women or men may shy away from, you know, giving that gift for, you know, whatever specific reason. But when you stick to, you know, you know, your neutrals and your grad 
gratitude, you know, side of things uh, with the imaging on gift cards or the messaging um, on the gift cards, um, I can certainly see, you know, how sales would rise um, going that route. Yeah. Krista, anything to add in there? I, I, yes, I am going to add a few things, but I want to call out um, two things that you said, Winnie, really, I think, um, speak to the hospitality industry. So you said emotional connection, which is a term that is often used in hospitality as well, um, to kind of create that um, connection with a client and make mm -hmm. sure that you, that client is going to return to you. Um, as you said, there's studies have proven those emotional connections build uh, great relationships. And, and that's what, you know, you want to go where somebody knows your name, for, for lack of a, of a better way to say it. So, so people do really associate with that and then also brand um in you know luxury hospitality which is a lot of our clients um the the brand the branding that goes into um the spa the hotel everything that they're doing um a lot of thought goes into that so um we do generally see that come through um in the marketing pieces like their email co um confirmations and so those similar branding would follow through onto what that gift card um would look like so that obviously these people are seeing that same image that reminds them uh, of the spa um, mm. so, so great points. And then I would also say that, um, in terms of marketing the gift cards for the spa, uh, the email communications, uh, would be a good way. Um, you can also add that to your receipt template, um, you know, throughout the holiday season, um, conversations between, uh, therapists and guests like organic type conversations. Have you started your holiday shopping? Did you know we have gift cards available? Mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing, just to kind of um, get it out there. Uh, also, if they are in a hotel, they could be um, advertising that the gift cards are available in their, in their operations, like in the restaurant, in the rooms and things like that, um, if they needed to, to just um, communicate it as best they can. And also e-blast, e like an e-blast out to your database to let um, people know you may even have a promotion uh, with gift cards. Like say you buy a gift card for $200, uh, receive an extra $25 uh, to kind of boost up the sales as well. Incentivize those sales, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, while we're on the topic of promotional ideas, this is kind of a dual question. Um, Winnie, there's a part for you. Krista, there's a part for you. Winnie, what have you seen in any industry using GiveX's platform that really caught your eye for you know unique promotional ideas? Yeah, and gosh, I've seen so many over the years, but I'd say one that really stands out is um, so here in Canada, we have a, uh, a chain that has, it's, it's a restaurant chain throughout Canada and has multiple brands under it. And they do a lot of distribution um, through the third party malls. So one of the cards that they did is what's called a, a snap off bonus card. So what it is, is for a $50 gift card that can be redeemed at any of the concepts under that restaurant brand. Mm -hmm. What happens is, is so the purchaser would snap the card off and there's also a bonus card that's attached. So it's two piece. So mm -hmm. there's a bonus and then the gift card, they snap it off. They would gift the $50 gift card portion to whoever that they're going to gift it to. And then they receive a $175 bonus card that can then be redeemed at any, uh, for different rewards, like a discount, meal offer at any of the brands and it, they gave a time period it was between this you know april and september and they had a, a, an amazing response to that um because it's not only just gifting but the purchaser themselves an extra you know additional incentive to purchase their card you know as opposed to other cards they get so that rewarded yes yeah, yeah. So that's been a really successful one. Wow, that's actually an incredible idea. Giving You get to give your gift that you were originally going to give, and then you get rewarded for purchasing something for somebody else, doing a nice gesture. Wow. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then from the technology side, mm -hmm. GiveX will activate both card numbers at the same time. So when the gift card number is activated, the bonus card is also activated. So it's, it's that technology that we're able to support that, that promo as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. So yeah, there's no, you know, your guest has to, you know, use their gift first before you can, and then you can, you know, allot certain dates. So, you know, as you mentioned, I mean, that business would essentially be guaranteed revenue through the months of April to September. So, you know, if they ran a poor, uh, a report and, you know, see how, how many of these promotional gift cards they sold, they can mm. almost be certain, you know, how much revenue is going to come in between that term between that certain time frame. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So, so yeah, so that's uh, another idea. Um, wh one other one I'll just touch on really quickly mm -hmm. is a, a refer a friend. So that's another okay. popular type of um, promo that we do. And so these promotional coupons, they're a little different from gift card numbers mm -hmm. because the way that our technology does it is it actually isn't redeemed or sorry, it actually isn't on the books as liability um, so that it's redeemed at the time it's being used. So Got unlike it. gift card liability where it's activated, that could be sitting there and the, the recipient may never redeem it. <laughs> this technology actually, there is no funds on it until it's used. Got so it. in this particular promo, what happens is we sent out a $10 coupon, for example, that can be mm -hmm. redeemed at a coffee shop or so to speak. If that recipient that receives it clicks on and enters in the email of their friend, it's called refer a friend, they get an additional coupon for that same amount. So it kind of was spurring more and more um, referrals or expanding new customers by incentivizing them. And so they, and they were accumulating a whole database of email addresses. So the sort of refer a friend campaign was also something that um, received a, a, some traction uh, through that promotion. Yeah. And as you capture all of that contact information, those email addresses, you have an entire database to, you know, reach out to for any promotions in the future as well. You know, if a certain promotion got really, really great traction, I mean, mm -hmm. more than likely those, that same group of people who participated in round one are going to be interested in, you know, any other future promotions that you're running at your business. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Krista, any promotions that you have personally run or that you have seen maybe one of our clients run that have that has had a huge success with gift cards? So um, similar to uh, what Winnie had mentioned mm -hmm. uh, about kind of additional incentives to the person buying mm -hmm. the card, um, we did run those promotions where we um, added a bonus onto a certain amount of uh, money you would spend. So to 200, if you spend 200, you get an extra 25. If you spend 500, mm -hmm. um, you get an extra 50. If you spend a thousand, you get an extra hundred dollars. Um, and what we found in, in a lot, in some cases is that people would give those to the, the person, um, but oftentimes they might keep it for themselves also. Um, <laughs> so it also helps drive revenue for the spa because it may not be enough to um, cover a, a whole treatment yeah. so you know mm -hmm. here's fifty dollars but you'd need to spend maybe hundred and fifty dollars uh, to get a treatment so then you're looking at additional revenue there um, we also built out packages uh, where we they could include a gift so for example you spend a thousand dollars on a gift card and we include a luxury spa robe um, that has mm -hmm. like the, the spa branded um, logo on it again Winnie mm -hmm. coming back to brand uh, we want people walking around with anything that um, you know advertises for the spa um, so mm -hmm. and we would do some smaller packages as well where it may just be um, some of the like body wash and things like that used in the in the change room packaged up uh, with the gift card and into a basket that way mm. um, and yeah. similar at Mother's Day like we may be giving away like a rose with it um, just wow. anything that kind of like li lined up with it um, with the luxury some chocolate at Valentine's Day we would do like a lint chocolate bar um, mm. in the package with the gift card um, people people love that along with you know the packaging that comes along with it so good way to drive revenue Absolutely. And to any of our viewers, the key takeaway here is incentivize, incentivize, incentivize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of viewers, we have a few questions from our viewers, um, both for Winnie and Krista. If you want to jump in at, at any point, please feel free. Um, 
actually, Krista, you kind of answered this one already, but Stacy had asked, what is the best way to promote my online gift card site? Uh, Krista had just touched on this, you know, putting it in, in your email template or for the holiday season, if it's, you know, brand approved uh, in your signature, word of mouth. Um, Winnie, Krista, any other additional ways um, that Stacy and all of our other viewers can um, best promote their online gift card site? Hmm. I guess one other thing is that's quite popular is maybe on social media. Um, so, right. So on Twitter and uh, Facebook page and all of that nowadays, that's certainly um, one area that gets quite a bit of exposure. So, yeah. Absolutely. One other thing they could do um, is QR codes. So I know we've seen QR codes, um, you know, over the last year become very popular on restaurant tables and things like that. Mm, but sure. having people just be able to swipe a, a QR code that brings them straight to the site to purchase um, would be a great way to promote them as well. Krista is on the innovation ballpark today. Wow. Yes, <laughs> QR codes are, you know, the way into the future. We're all we're all carrying around cell phones. And, you know, if you see something you like um, here in New York City, there's QR codes for different brands and businesses all over the subway. I can't, you know, deny if, you know, somebody was advertising something or their online e-commerce site and, you know, that looked interesting, I would absolutely hold my phone up to it and just see what they were offering. So, yes. QR codes, I could definitely confirm, are the way into the future. Um, Winnie, this one is definitely for you. Robert asks, are GiveX's capabilities international? And if not, are there plans of expansion? Wow, oh, that's a great question. So absolutely, GiveX. Uh, in fact, we are a global company. That's really how we do position ourselves. Uh, we're, we operate in over 50 countries. Um, in fact, our data centers uh, is within a global network of data. So we have 11 data centers worldwide. Um, we've got 14 offices. So that's from Canada to US, uh, London, UK, Australia, Sao Paulo and Brazil, Mexico, uh, Madrid, Spain, Hong Kong, uh, Shenzhen and Singapore. So we are quite across the globe and we operate in... 64 currencies. Uh, so the ability at any time, in fact, we have something that's called cross currency conversion, um, dynamic conversion therapy. So someone, for example, could purchase a gift card in Canadian dollars across the border, and then that could be redeemed in US dollars, and you'd, you'd have uh, multi currency reporting to help reconcile that. Um, and then, thirdly, our global support team, all of our, our staff. Uh, are trained on all of our products. We don't outsource to any third party and they are multilingual. So a lot of that is in French, um, English, Portuguese, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, Arabic, Hindi, and Spanish. So really global is important to us. Um, we are thankful to a lot of these other markets that have brought innovation in, not only to the North American market, but from other, other markets globally as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, next question. Randy with an I. Okay, Winnie, this one may not be for you, but me and Krista could probably take, take the lead on this one. But sure. I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't answer one of the questions from one of our viewers. Um, Randy with an I asks, in the COVID world, how can you have guests test without testers? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and answer this really quick. It has nothing to do with gift cards, but I know Randy with an I may be upset if we don't cover this. Randy, I would honestly tell you to purchase the little plastic cups with the caps. Don't open any of your testers. You know, in the past, you know, you walked into, you know, JCPenney, Macy's, you know, they have all the testers open, perfumes, there's lotion crusted around the top of it that a million other people have touched. I would say don't open any of the testers. Um, and if you, the products that you are going to hand out samples of, keep them in your back office, keep them under the desk. So your team is the one responsible for pumping a little bit in that little plastic cup that you can get that 
you can then cover and then hand to your customer or guest that is asking for a sample. Um, we're just living in a time now where you know you don't want a million hands all over you know um, testers and you know things like that. So anything you know small. Um, I know those little plastic cups do come with covers. Um, if you're talking about you know lotions, creams, um, things of that nature, um, that's super simple and inexpensive to do. And you know if you spend I don't know eight dollars on a stack of you know those plastic cups with the covers um for somebody to buy you know 120 dollar you know lotion or whatever they're asking um for a sample of um it's it's well worth it krista anything you want to expand on there uh no that just i just so happen to have one sitting beside me you know, <laughs> see what that looks like <laughs> yes krista can you hold up the I know. I was like, I can't believe he's talking about this, and I have one sitting right here. Uh, but yeah, for sure, because these are not. That's not even that big, right? So you can no. take like a Q-tip. Um, it's not even a lot of product, but it's perfect. <laughs> I love that you just randomly had that sitting there because I don't even think I sent you the registering question. <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing. But yes, um, I would say that your that your new best practice going forward in a in a post COVID world. Um, all right, our spa leader masterclass fast five. Winnie, what time do you start your day? Oh goodness, I would say anywhere between eight thirty to nine. I'd Got say it. That's, that's pretty much it. Yep. Winnie, which what is your favorite spa treatment? Massage, facial, body, nails. Oh, that is so hard, but I would have to hands down, probably a massage Got have it. to Same end. Here. Oh yeah. And I missed that so much during COVID. Oh, when things start opening up, it's just, yeah, <laughs> made that booking right away. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Winnie coffee or tea? Tea. Yeah. I'm not a big coffee drinker. So <laughs> interesting. I think you're the first person that we've had on that has actually said tea. Everybody no. else. <laughs> Yes, everybody else, myself included, is always, by the time you, you know, we film these webinars, everybody has had like eight cups of coffee, myself included, um, and probably some pre-workout. You're the first person that has actually said tea, and I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's not, I, you know, Starbucks doesn't make a lot of money off me, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's funny, but yeah, I just never have liked the, the taste, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I've always leaned more towards tea, so. It's amazing, and yeah. it's better for you. We all know that, but we've been drinking coffee <laughs> since we were eight years old. It's fine. Um, right. Winnie, if you could, if, <laughs> if you could visit one place in the world tomorrow, where would you go? Oh, I would go to Greece. You know, Amazing. Greece is, yes, you know, especially just to, uh, just during the pandemic, you know, I just want to go somewhere where there's lots of, lots of sunshine and water. And then ever since I saw that movie musical Mamma Mia, and, you know, I saw the <laughs> blue waters, uh, that's always been my sort of utopia destination. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I can't tell you how many pictures I've seen online. Just like, you know, I believe it's Athens. Yeah. I believe it's Athens Ooh, with yes, all, Athens. you know, the white buildings on the side of the mountain, yes. and the crystal <laughs> blue water. I just want to like jump into one of those pictures. Oh, absolutely. Winnie, you have offered us so much insight and I know that you have so much knowledge and, you know, just, you know, experience underneath your belt. What is something that you wish that you knew when you were 20? You know, so that is such a great question. Um, and so, you know, I've been thinking about this since you were, since then I saw that question would be coming up. And one of the things I think for me, I was one of those, um, definitely a nerd sort of in, in high school and right, and really focusing on studying and, you know, theories and stuff. And so when I got to university, um, I really struggled with just really practical stuff. So I think if I knew to pay attention to things like, how do I cook? How do I do my laundry? <laughs> how do I, you know, how do I use, how do I fix things? Um, I think I, I would have probably focused more on practical. Practical, okay. I remember my first job, I didn't even know how to use a fax machine. It was just, you know, things like that. Um, I often reflect back and think, okay, I probably should have definitely paid more attention to learning how to cook in the kitchen and then probably would be more self-sufficient in a way when I did eventually leave home. So, yeah. Got it. Got it. Krista, <laughs> do you want to do the masterclass fast five? 
Uh, sure. <laughs> okay, awesome. Just because we have you on. Krista, what time do you start your day? Uh, seven. Got it. Krista, what is your favorite spa treatment? I'm a body treatment uh, go-to. Any type of like detox, mud, seaweed uh, wrap. Um, I love those. I'd love to hear it. Krista, coffee or tea? Cold brew. Every nice. day. All day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Krista, I'm going to toggle off. How many cold brews? <laughs> Uh, well, sometimes two. Okay. Uh, I also recently have been drinking Perrier with caffeine in it. I don't know if oh. you've seen this. It's like a Perrier Ooh. with caffeine. So yeah, that's, that's also, I add one of those in too. <laughs> Interesting. I have not seen those, but as soon as we wrap this, I'm going to go to the grocery store and go find Perrier with caffeine in it. <laughs> Krista, <laughs> if we could visit, if you could visit one place in the world tomorrow, where would you go? Egypt. I would love to see the pyramid. <laughs> Amazing destination. And then Krista, what is something you wish you knew when you were 20? I think so many things, but I also think that sometimes when you make mistakes, you learn more. So I'm going to go with just learning by error. You know, sometimes um, you find out things that you know, wouldn't necessarily think you would learn. Um, so I ask a lot of questions. I don't know if you notice when I, when I talk, when people start talking about things, I do, I tend to ask a lot of questions about a lot of things just to try to gain as much knowledge about things that I don't know about. That comes along with traveling too, right? When you travel to places, you try to understand cultures and, you know, mm. what's happening in the countries. So I'd say trial and error is a, is a good way to go also. Amazing cool. and very relatable answer. I think that everyone can definitely take, uh, take something away from that. Ladies and gentlemen, Winnie Tang, Director of <laughs> Business Development at GiveX, and Krista Fallis, Director of Customer Success and Spa Extraordinaire at Book for Time. And thank you for tuning in and being a part of the Spa Leaders Masterclass Series. I'm Sal Capizzi. See you next time.